Uh, hi, my name is Stephen Moran. And I'm Vikran Jayakumar. And uh, we're going to be presenting on our deep uh, learning based automatic license plate recognition system. Um, so as part of the, the executive summary for this project, um, so first of all the motivation uh, was to develop an accurate high throughput low latency as well as energy efficient deep learning approach for uh, processing live traffic camera data. Uh, and this, whatever solution we develop, must be robust to noise as well as camera placement angles, etc. Uh, so some of the challenges involved here are uh, the TensorFlow object detection setup as well as de uh, de system debug issues. And we also uh, had some challenges integrating the object detection object recognition pipelines. Uh, the achievements on this project include uh, we implemented three different detection models, so we were able to evaluate the performance between each of the three. Um, and the final uh, two-stage system we implemented uh, used an SSD Lite implementation um, that achieved a 91.6% mean accuracy uh, and is able to process individual frames in under uh, 0.41 seconds. Uh, and we do leave some discussion for future work um, on kind of the next steps that this project can be taken. Uh, th those include additional network optimizations, including various pruning methodologies, as well as uh, student teacher training. So the, the system that we implemented was a two-stage pipeline structure, uh, where the first stage is the detection, uh, detection stage with the task of identifying the location of license plates within a given frame. Uh, and this is a crucial step because uh, cameras can be placed at a variety of different angles. And so in order to provide the best possible input to the second stage, the decoding stage, we have to train our system to crop the license plates uh, exactly. And so uh, the decoding stage, the second stage in this pipeline, would then be tasked with identifying the character string uh, on a given license plate, cropped license plate. And applications for this include uh, monitoring traffic, uh, potentially in use as red light cameras, uh, or it could even be used as part of the Amber Alert system that we have here in California. Um, the data set uh, that we, we use to train our system included uh, uh, images from three different cameras, uh, types of cameras which we call AC, LE, and RP, or access control cameras, traffic law enforcement, or road patrol cameras. And each of these had approximately 100 training images and uh, 500 to 600 test images. And these images are of variable size, uh, ranging from 320 by 240 pixels to 640 by 480 pixels. So we'll, we'll proceed on to the first uh, stage in our, our network, the object detection. Okay. Thanks, Steven. So now we'll look into the details of the different object detection algorithms which we implemented. We decided to go with SSD or the single shot detector. So the reason it is being called a single shot detector is that in previous approaches, there used to be a region proposal network followed by a bounding box proposal network. So it is like two stages. Whereas SSD has just a single network which takes care of both region region proposal as well as the bounding box prediction and SSD is one of the state-of-the-art algorithms because it can operate in real time and as this figure shows it shows a comparison between SSD and YOLO. YOLO is another real-time detection system and we can see from the results that SSD actually outperforms YOLO. And the first algorithm which we tried based on SSD is SSD based retina net or retina net so retina net has an ssd detector with a restnet based feature extractor and a feature pyramid network so it combines the feature pyramid network and the retina net to get the features from the original image and then ssd architecture is used to extract the bounding box from the to propose different bounding box and also make the classifications the network design is actually very simple and it also fo focuses on a novel focal loss function that eliminates the accuracy gap between our one stage detector and the state of the art two stage detectors. So the next architecture is the MobileNet V2 plus SSD. 
So again, we use the SSD for detection, whereas MobileNet version 2 has the feature extractor. MobileNet v version 2 is an improvement over the version 1. The main contribution of V2 is that it powers, the, it, it can be used on embedded devices and it also uses depth-wise separable convolutions. It introduces new two, two new features to the architecture. The first one is linear bottlenecks between the layers. And the second one is the shortcut connections between the bottlenecks. So the basic structure of a mobile net version 2 is shown in this diagram. And finally, we tried the SSD light model. So again, we wanted to reduce the size of a model with different optimization techniques. And one of them is to replace all the convolution layers with depth-wise separable convolutions. So a depth-wise separable convolution means that the CNN layer is separated into two stages. The first stage performs a depth-wise convolution followed by a point-wise convolution, which is also known as projection. So as you can see from these tables, the comparison between SSD and SSD Lite shows that the parameters has been reduced by seven, almost seven times. And also the computations, the number of multiply and addition, multiply operations and addition operations have been reduced by seven times. So the comparison of SSD Lite with MobileNet and SSD 300, SSD 512, YOLO V2 is shown on the table on the right side. And you can see it almost achieves the similar performance as YOLO V2, but with 10 times less number of parameters and almost five times less. Again, I think it's almost eight times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, less number of operations. So for the license plate recognition, we decided to use a, an architecture which is an hybrid architecture combining CNN and bidirectional LSTM layers. So CNN is used, CNN layers is used to extract the spatial features, whereas bidirectional LSTM layers was used to capture the sequence in the license plate. Then these features were concatenated with each other and passed to a dense layer to up, obtain a common feature representation. And final layer was actually six parallel dense layers to classify the number in each location of the license plate. So since our data set had six digits in each license plate, we had a six parallel dense layers in the output layer. So this is the this is how our model architecture looks like. Each meta layer, we call a CNN followed by batch or max pool and dropout as a meta layer. We had six of them for feature extraction followed by bidirectional LSTM, a dense layer to obtain the feature representation and followed by six parallel dense layers for each digit in the license plate. Um, so some of the network optimizations that we, we explored, uh, which one was previously dis uh, discussed, the depth-wise separable convolutions uh, in, in, uh, deployed in the SSD Lite implementation. Um, so we've already discussed that. We've also explored 8-bit quantization um, so the, the depth-wise separable convolution uh, previously mentioned uh, reduces the number of parameters by a factor of close to seven. Um, and we also, looking at the 8-bit quantization, the table on the right, we see that uh, with quantization, we're able to reduce the size of the model. Uh, this would be the model for the decode stage, the second stage in our network, uh, is reduced by a factor of four. Uh, with only a negligible decrease in the mean accuracy of uh, that network. Um, so if we move on to implementation comparisons, uh, so this first table is going to show the three different, uh, so the entire pipeline, so it, each of these systems would be the full system, including uh, detection and decode stages, uh, where each of the three versions have a different detection stage, so red net, uh, net mobile net v2, and SSD light. Um, and as you can see, so the, the network we optimally, uh, that we chose at the end of the day was the SSD light implementation because of its small size, um, as well as it, its uh, decrease in uh, inference time per image. Um, and yeah, so the SSD light implementation, we're able to, for the full pipeline process, detect uh, the license plate in the given image and then decode it into a text string in under 0.41 seconds. Um, if we look at the decode stages, uh, the second stage, uh, the accuracy of that particular stage, 
we can look at the accuracy of each individual digit. So the, the given uh, data set that we used, all of the images were uh, six digit license plates. These are gonna be characters as well as numbers. Um, so it, based off the location in that license plate, the first, second through six digit, uh, we can see that we get uh, slightly different accuracies per digit, but the overall mean accuracy of all digits is 91.64%. Uh, similarly, we can also look at the edit distance. Uh, the edit distance is a way of quantifying how dissimilar the two sequences or strings are. Uh, and so you can think of this as essentially being the number of incorrect digits per license plate. So uh, you would strive for maximizing the edit distance of zero and minimizing the edit distance of of six uh, or, or or any non-zero edit distance. So uh, as you can see uh, of the samples, the test samples that we had, 736 of the license plates were 100%. Uh, all of the digits were detected correctly, decoded correctly. Um, and we only had a couple for the five and at a distance of five and six, which is primarily noise. Okay, so the conclusions of our project is that we implemented a two-stage pipeline deep learning architecture for processing the live traffic camera data with high throughput and low latency. It was it can make the inference for a single sample at 0 0.1, 0 0.41 seconds. So this can be used in a real-time implementation. The Recognition algorithm or the decoder algorithm was based on a hybrid architecture which combines convolutional neural networks and a bidirectional LSTM layers. The mean accuracy achieved is 91.64% per each character. And we also optimized that design for by using depth-wise separable convolutions and quantization. This greatly helped in reducing the size and number of operations in a model. A couple of future works in this project can be exploring student teacher training to further reduce the model size also trying to apply variable threshold based model pruning and also a trained um, model or i mean have a robust training of model by using data augmentation and uh one final point um so we also uh, attempted to uh do a more in-depth uh analysis of of the complexity of each of our networks Unfortunately, the, the provided uh, compiler uh, is not compatible with some of the layers that we implemented in our system. Uh, so we leave uh, the discussion there um, for our, our report. And uh, so we uh, encourage you to take a look at our report. Thank you. Thank you.